Hey you, welcome to my queendom. I'm Ashley Cole and today I'll be sharing three ways to confirm if you're expressing your emotions in a healthy way. But whatever, <laughs> let me stop. But that's how some of you would suppress your emotions by shutting down and I'll confirm right now there is a healthier way to shelf your emotions. Just so we're clear, whatever isn't going to make the cut. So let's get into it. Number one, if whatever is your go-to when you're uncomfortable, not only are you verbally suppressing your emotions, you're dismissing the person you're speaking to while projecting negative energy. Be careful with that. What you put into the universe will reflect back to you in different forms. What's worse is by you suppressing your emotions, you strip yourself of the right to speak your truth. Stop doing that. Your feelings are valid, but there's a proper way to express them. It may not be the time nor the place to have that discussion. However, validate the way you feel by setting aside time to speak your truth, even if the conversation needs to happen at a later date. Furthermore, the proper way to pause the conversation when things escalate is to be self-aware enough to say, this conversation is pushing me outside of my comfort zone, but it's very important to me. Can we discuss it at a later time or date? Initially, while transitioning to this way of communicating, you may slip a few times, but the least you can do is try. Don't be surprised if the first few times what actually comes out is, look, I can't do this right now. <laughs> can we discuss this later? Still, 10 times better than whatever, boo. <laughs> progress is progress. And just so you're aware, this kind of response will require you to be emotionally mature. So if you're laughing and rolling your eyes, Take that as a clear indication, it's time to grow up. Instead of, oh, so you must want me to clap back. <laughs> there are healthier ways for you to communicate without raising your blood pressure or attacking people you love. Leave the reenaction of white girls on the movie screen. Yes, it was an amazing movie and it may seem fun in the moment, but it's draining the hell out of your energy for no apparent reason. Plus, they won't go to jail for acting a damn fool on the screen, but you will. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just trying to help out. Number two, when you're triggered during a disagreement, do you A, go ham, or B, self-reflect in order to investigate why the person you're speaking to triggered an emotional response in the first place? I'll go ahead and answer for you. A select few of you may self-reflect. But the majority of you stay ready to clap back. And I'm not judging because I used to be you. I saw verbally clapping back at people who tried me as having the opportunity to use my well-equipped weapon of choice, my voice. <laughs> I was out here acting as if life was a game of Mortal Kombat and someone challenged me to choose a weapon. I'm also aware I had to heal that part of me so I didn't pass it down to my children. Furthermore, after healing, I came to the realization by responding the way I had, I was choosing to exchange energy with people who didn't deserve to be anywhere near me. Unacceptable. The point is, you are wrong if you respond the way I used to, but you have plenty of time to change. Your life is not a game of street fighter, and it is your responsibility to treat others how you want to be treated. Obviously, everyone is not going to live by this rule, but it's not your problem, and their behavior is a reflection of them, not you. Use the trigger to your advantage. Triggers are simply there to show you things within you that still require healing. True, what that person said or probably did was rude as hell, but when you're healed, the foolish things people say and do bounce right off of you because you know who you are and you'd rather remain at peace than to bark back at someone who's projecting how they really feel about themselves onto you. Plus, responding negatively gives the person who's coming at you sideways access to your energy. I don't know about you, but I'm very protective of mine and I damn sure don't want anyone who's projecting to be pulling on my energy. I'm just saying. Number three, when life gets you down, do you A, play the victim by sulking, crying, overthinking, worrying, and allowing yourself to slip into a deep depression? Or B, do you step into your power, remind yourself who the hell you are, and keep it pushing? Or C, if you're like me, <laughs> you do both. Because I'm going to cry while I'm stepping into my power. No shame. The reason being is A, I got my emotions out of the way and I validated them so I can release any unnecessary baggage as well as think logically. B, 
I'm affirming who I am, which allows me to step into my power and be the baddest I came here to be, period, okay? One thing I will say as a side note, if you suffer from clinical depression, this is not an attack on your mental health. Continue doing what's best for you and for those of you under undiagnosed but feeling you may need more assistance pulling yourself out of a dark place, please get the help you need. It's necessary. But for those of us who just like to sulk, complain, and whine because it sounds good and we're comfortable in it, get your butt up. Cry it out if you need to and get it out of your system and then get up. Speak life and change your perspective. No one promised you life will be perfect, but it has the potential to be rewarding and that is completely up to you. So handle your business how you see fit, but handle it in a healthier way because you deserve better. I love you all and send you peace, blessings, love, and light. Bye.